Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City a lovely place to live. I'm your host today, Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty, and it is a gorgeous February day here. It's actually Valentine's Day, and I'm excited to spend it with a new friend, Jared Jarvis, with Jared Jarvis Photography, and he also has a hobby called Hike Solo Outdoors that you guys are going to get to know about, and so I'm super excited about that. I hope you've had a great morning or day or whatever's going on. Um, just get ready to make it better because you're going to meet a great dude here. So thanks for coming on the podcast, Jerry. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, I'm excited. So first thing, Johnson City Living, you know the drill. You've listened. What is your favorite thing about Johnson City? Favorite thing about Johnson City? Or East Tennessee. I, you could go, you honestly, could well, I think the city is really cool. I think the location is amazing. Um, I had actually never heard of Johnson City before moving here, but... I really think it's very much a hidden gem. I don't know if it's going to stay that way for much longer, but right now it's it's a really cool place to live that not that many people who are outside of the city know about. So <laughs> I really think like the being around all the cool mountain vistas and things like that and, and being in a place that's actually somewhat affordable is really awesome to live. Yeah. And the people here are just awesome. I've experienced nothing but kindness since moving here. So I think that's the number one thing, man, the people in the mountains. Yeah, it's definitely over is. And over and over. All right. So did you grow up in Johnson City? Let's I, get the Jared backstory. I did not. So I grew up um, a little bit born? outside of Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, yeah. Uh, moved here at the very end of 2018. Okay. So, but I moved here by way of Houston, Texas. Well, that makes um, sense. It's right so, way. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Uh, my, my wife and I, we, we spent about four years in Houston before coming here. And so now we've been here just a little bit over four years here. Cool. So. What took you to Houston? So my wife, uh, she's in human resources. Uh -huh. She's amazing. She works. Uh, she worked for Exxon Mobil okay. in their human resources department. And then uh, she got a really good opportunity here at Eastman. And so nice. that's what brought us out here. Awesome. So. Cool. Um, okay. So you came in 2018? Very end of 2018. It's, yeah. it, it was pretty much the beginning of 2019 is when, gotcha. I, so when I came. I came a little bit later than she did. did. six, eight, 12 months, and then it shut down. <laughs> pretty much. Well, how did that go? Like, So moving from Houston to here, and how did you, did you get like incorporated into the town pretty easily? Yeah, we, personally, yes, for sure. Professionally, um, it, it was a big change. Houston, obviously, is a massive city and we were pretty much downtown very close to downtown when we lived in houston so we were really in the thick of it uh so it did take a little bit to get used to it culturally and professionally i actually when we first moved here i just kind of took a few months off to kind of figure out what everything was around here so but but personally you know we felt right at home pretty quickly like we said earlier the uh the people here are just really awesome and everyone's always waving and you know that that took a little bit of getting used to because people are really nice in Houston but if everyone was waving to everyone it would be their full-time job with how many people are around so <laughs> so it was really cool the first place we actually went was Jonesboro and that's kind of uh become a special spot for us because Jonesboro is such a cool little town so we like to get out there quite a bit yeah what's your favorite spot in Jonesboro oh man I don't know if there's a single favorite spot uh, the spots kind of change depending on what we're doing, but just walking down Main Street, it never is, gets old. Does it, it? It's amazing, and it's honestly a really awesome spot to take photos at too. Like with couples, it's kind of like that small town, like kind of Gilmore Girls vibes. Mm -hmm. um, but we also like that walking trail that kind of goes through. Um, I think it goes awesome. all the way. Yeah, it goes all the way out to Persimmon Ridge Park, but we like the part that's right there in downtown. We we like to walk out there and stuff with our son, so that's always a lot of fun. Yeah, that's cool. Main Street's also awesome. Yeah. How many uh, how many kids do you guys have? Just one. How old? Um, he is going to be two in April. Aww. So he's very much in the uh, kind of figuring out his own personality phase and 
wanting to uh, kind of be independent, but also be with us. So yeah. it's, it's really cool. He's in a really cool development stage. So, Man, and they grow up so fast. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's, it's pretty crazy to but think right that now they're he's like sponges. I mean, somebody yeah. tell me like before they hit five, they can learn three different languages and wow. have an accent. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I mean, I can believe it. He, yeah. He's learning a new language right now, which is our language, but he's definitely good at repeating us. So. Appalachian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So what do you, uh, besides going to Jonesboro, what do you guys do for fun? Well, we like um, going out and kind of finding new restaurants or going to our favorite places. Um, we... Now that we have a kid, you know, finding the coolest parks and playgrounds is definitely a thing. But really, we just love going to uh, kind of like the local festivals. We just went to the Chocolate Festival just last weekend. Um, and so, so yeah, we, we really just like doing things, mm -hmm. kind of getting out of the house, having new experiences, things like that. We love going to Asheville. Yeah. Asheville's super fun. Um, it's so, yeah. an hour away. It's really nice. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. It's an amazing place to go and visit. And, you know, if you kind of get tired of the restaurants and stuff here, which it's kind of hard to now, there's so many coming up oh, that I are know. new. Yeah. Um, but you can kind of go down there and they got so much good, you know, dining and kind of like the craft breweries, if you're into that, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So I looked over the uh, bridge the other day when Carly and I were coming back from Greenville and New Belgium looks like it's doubled in size. Yeah, it's huge. That so that's uh, that's one of my favorite spots. Oh, man, it's so good. Yeah, it's it's a really fun spot. That lawn is just like really good for going out and playing on, and the food trucks they bring in are always really good. Mm -hmm. So, have you taken your son over to Rotary Park here in town? There's a yeah. great little program. Yeah, yeah. So we've um, we've nice. been there twice. Okay. Um, I really like Rotary Park, uh, but. We, we live kind of right between Johnson City and Kingsport. We live kind of near Gray. So we're kind of between that and Warrior's Path. Oh, Those yeah. two playgrounds are, are both really Path great. Warrior's Path is awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole park. Warrior's Path is... It's really cool. Talking about hidden gems, Warrior's Path is definitely one of them. Yeah. All the activities they have. I think Roan Mountain State Park is what a lot of people think of when it's mm -hmm. like yeah. really cool parks around here. But I would put Warrior's Path up against any of the state parks around here locally. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. Okay, so um, you have a photography business. I do. That's how we got. So, did you go to school for that? Tell me about. No. Into photography. Um, I, I so, I guess it was kind of two parts. Uh, kind of the school of YouTube. It's one of them. There you go. Um, but really, I did kind of like an apprenticeship type thing with a photographer in Colombia, uh -huh. who's actually our wedding photographer. Um, now did you, grow, I'm going to jump in. Did you grow up wanting to be a photographer? Like, is that something you saw? So it was always something that was kind of around me. Uh -huh. Um, I don't know if it was something that I ever said, this is what I want to do, but growing up, uh, I, I do remember the first time I ever looked through like an old SLR. Um, my mom had, I, I believe it was a context. It may have been a Minolta, but I think it was a context. And I remember we were in Charleston, South Carolina, mm -hmm. and I saw there was like a smokestack off in the distance, and um, I couldn't see it that well because it was so far away. And my mom handed me the camera and said, hey, look through here. It was like a 300 millimeter lens or something like that. And so I looked through, and I just remember it being magnified. But the thing that I noticed was like, now this was a very, very old SLR, but still they had maybe some light-up focus points in there. And I just remember looking through the glass and thinking, wow, this is so cool. I feel like a fighter pilot looking through this glass. And then later, um, whenever – I well – Whenever I was a kid, my dad was a big thrift store shopper, and every time we would go in there, I would always run over to like the film camera section and try to pick out some cameras and stuff. And that's cool. Uh, then in high school, I I kind of got more into videography. I would spend any money that wasn't going toward gas or, or you know <laughs> going around like that um, on these cheap, just terrible little video cameras that were maybe 50 bucks or nice. 75 bucks, something those like that. Like the big VHS ones. No, know? they actually, this was the very <laughs> early close to being as old as I am. Are you? Dawn <laughs> of uh, like the internal, like oh, hard yeah. drives yeah. in them. So that was the thing they were trying to make them smaller and smaller and smaller. But back then the, 
how small they were just led to absolutely terrible quality. But I would just record everything we did. We would go to concerts and stuff, and I would record that. I would just make these goofy videos with my brothers and stuff. So, yeah, you, do you have those archives somewhere? Have you dug them I, out of the? I wish. I wish. I I did have them archived on some old discs, but those things have since been lost. And oh. I will say, every time I visit my parents' house. Uh, I will, you know, take maybe five or ten minutes to looking around for those, but I think at this point they may be gone. Oh. But it would be a nice treasure to find. That would one be day. a nice treasure. Hey, Jared's mom and dad, go look for those discs, <laughs> and, or just give them up. You don't look that that goofy in them. That's probably they may be hiding them from you. Like, yeah, like, oh. I'm sure. I I have a thought in my head of how I think they look, and I'm sure whenever <laughs> I, if I ever see them again, it will be much much worse. I'm sure it's just going to be like the intro of the Wonder Years, like it's. <laughs> All good stuff, throwing ball with your dad, that kind of thing. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly how it went. No. Yeah, okay, so you had this, you started looking when you were a kid, it was interesting, and then how did it develop into a business for you? So it was, it probably was kind of around the time that I met uh, who would eventually become my wife. They weren't really intertwined or anything, but I just, I just, I don't know. I just, something was just leading me to that. And I bought a very, so I, I bought a, it's called a bridge camera is what it's called. It's basically a larger camera, but it's got a lens built into it that usually zooms out quite far. It's not really the best thing for doing professional work on, mm -hmm. but it's a good thing to learn on. It's okay. got manual controls, things like that. Was it a mirror? Um, it was so this was a mirrorless camera, but it was before mirrorless cameras were very, very popular. It was it was kind of more like a big uh, camera body built around a cell phone sensor. It's basically <laughs> it, it wasn't a very good quality camera, right. but it was a good thing to kind of yeah. learn the basics on. Sure. And then from there, I, I bought my first DSLR, which was this cheap little Canon, and and I continued to try to learn on that. And you know, I kind of went through that. Um, Got a little frustrated, ended up selling it, immediately regretted that, and <laughs> went out and bought the same camera again. And after that, it kind of just like took off to the was moon. Like one of the Rebels or something? Yeah, it was a, a Rebel XT yeah. is what it was. It was yeah. bright silver. It was, uh, I, I still remember that camera exactly how it looked. It was like that and a 50 millimeter lens. And that's kind of what I learned the very basics on until I... Uh, talked to our wedding photographer who photographed our wedding, and he was the one who kind of took me under his wing for his apprenticeship. So, oh, cool. Now, where was that? Columbia. In Columbia. Yeah, he was a big time wedding photographer Who's in Columbia. You want to give him a shout out? Back in the day. I, I will give him a shout out. So, his name's Corey Potter. Nice. He's a really amazing guy. He's not in wedding photography anymore, but he does actually run. Um, it's called Fuel Your Photos. Oh. It's uh, SEO, so search engine optimization, specifically designed for photographers. Oh, so, cool. so yeah, Fuel Your Photos is his company. So definitely go check him out if you're a photographer. He'll that's... he'll get you to the top of the Google rankings. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe he'll listen to our podcast and put it up on the Google rankings. I'll send it to him. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay, for let's say there's a novice listening on the podcast right now and they're thinking about stepping into the world of photography. You have done the hard work on the front end and like, don't do this, don't do this, don't buy old VHS video cameras. <laughs> <laughs> what would you suggest to someone to kind of get started, get their, you know, like you did? If they're wanting to be a professional or if they just want to be good at photography? Because they're way different. Well, let's go both routes. Okay. Um, if you just want to be a good photographer, uh, I would just say, first and foremost, figure out what type of photography you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, if, I mean, there's all kinds of, it, you know, with Instagram and stuff, like if, if you do good photography, you don't necessarily have to be a quote unquote professional um, as long as you have people putting their eyes on your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so just figure out kind of the lane you want to be in. That's the, I think that's the biggest thing, whether professional or not for photographers is figuring out their niche. Right. Um, when you first start out, you obviously kind of want to do everything mm -hmm. and you really kind of have to because that helps you narrow it down and figure it out so basically just take photos as much as possible and that'll help you narrow down exactly what you want to kind of specialize in and then 
learn lighting. Learning lighting is much more important than necessarily learning every single feature of your camera. Okay. But being able to walk down the street and pick out a lighting scene and how it kind of plays with the surroundings, that is, whether professional or amateur, that's going to be probably the number one thing. And I think whenever I was first starting out, that was the thing that people didn't really talk about that much. They always want to talk about what's the best camera lens for this, what's the best camera mm -hmm. body for this. Right. That's where um, I'm you got to take a picture. So I Right. I mean, but really, what is a photograph? It's, you know, capturing a moment right. in time based on the lighting of the situation. If you have no lighting, you can't take a photo of that. <laughs> so right. you really got to learn the lighting. Unless the lighting is Google phone that takes pictures. And apparently, uh, yeah, yeah all, all the AI technology that's coming out. Um, it is crazy. It's crazy, but I don't think it's a bad thing. No, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. I think, I mean, it technology can be scary sometimes, right. but I think that it, it's a good thing, yeah. but that's really my advice is kind of figure out exactly what road you want to go down okay. first and foremost. And then lighting is just as important as anything else in photography, if not more important. And so would you go to the school YouTube to learn about lighting or would, is there a book or 100%. So I am now, I didn't go to school for photography, so I can't fully comment on this, but I have had a lot of friends and colleagues who, who maybe did go to school for it. And while it's really, really helpful about learning the technical rules of photography, if you will, um, it doesn't, if you want to be a professional, I think it kind of falls short in teaching you about business. Sure. Um, so that was the hardest thing for me because I kind of dove into it head first when we moved to Houston is how do I run this business? Now I had minimal experience. I was a co-owner of a very, very different business before that, but this was like doing it all on your own and being kind of a one man or one woman show. It's, it's much, much different. Oh, I know. And yeah. so I think that, learning the business aspect of it. If you want to be a professional, you, sh you definitely need to learn the business aspect probably first okay. before you actually learn. What would be your top two tips of the business side of it? Uh, hire a CPA. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and figure out exactly what the legalities of running a business are in your specific area. Yeah. Don't go. That's one thing that it's hard online to figure out because if you just go onto Google and type in how do I become legal in business, it is not necessarily going to be to your specific area. So a CPA can help with that as well. So hiring a CPA can honestly really kind of like they can tell you exactly what you need as mm -hmm. far as tax documentation, as far as getting set up with your county and mm -hmm. state, as far as how you pay your taxes or what taxes you need to pay. Um, or you can honestly just go, I just went down whenever I got my, my business license and tax ID, I just talked to the people at the tax office yeah. and they told me everything I needed to know. So just make sure you're good cool. to go. <laughs> yeah. You're legal, get insurance and hire a CPA. Those are great tips. And go to, go to meetups. Like that's one of the biggest things I did is go meet other small business owners sure. It's a great outlet to not only um, kind of get your name out there, mm -hmm. but they can also really help and talk to you because they've been there. They've done that. Mm -hmm. They've kind of put in the hard work already. And a lot of times they'll be very willing to share. Yeah. So. That's great. Yeah. I love it. Okay. And so now that you, you get this business up and running and you're in Houston and you're like, Millions of people in Houston. I don't know how yes. many, but I think about, in the metro area, it's about eight million. Eight million. That's it's the fourth largest city in the U.S. That's amazing. So yeah. you've got a little more opportunity to run into people, who, or they're having a lot more weddings there than they are here, just per capita. Mm -hmm. So how have you found um, getting in, like doing? Because you like shooting weddings the best. I, I think that's what we discussed beforehand. So I. I have always been a wedding photographer. However, in Houston, I, things kind of just took a different turn. And I was primarily doing like high-end corporate events. Oh, cool. And also a lot of political work. So I was doing shoots for 
different politicians when they would come through or like I did some work for the Supreme Court of Texas, things like that when they were kind of doing their rounds. Um, so I still did quite a few weddings, but the weddings in Houston kind of took a back burner and I more shot, helped shoot weddings with some friends more so than actually doing my own weddings. Gotcha. Um, but those high end events were very similar uh, to, to like nice wedding receptions and stuff. But the weddings really kind of hit more full force whenever I moved out here. Cool. Yeah. What's your favorite part about shooting a wedding? So I don't know if I have a favorite part, honestly, like I, I just really like kind of, there's a lot of trust that goes into shooting a wedding and I'm just always so grateful to the couples who kind of let me kind of be a part of their love story. Like they trust me enough. Mm. So that's a really big thing. And and I just like kind of walking alongside of the couples for like this little part of their journey. Um, Cause a lot of times weddings also have engagement photos that come beforehand. And so you kind of get to know these people and they, you know, become your friends mm -hmm. and you get to spend six months to a year, not necessarily with them all the time, but you're kind of talking back and forth and you see them multiple times and you get to capture these wonderful moments of them. Mm. So I don't know if I have a specific favorite part of the day itself, um, but I just love the couples. Yeah. Honestly, I love being able to walk through that their journey and, and they kind of look to, to me to kind of, uh, kind of be a little bit of a, a stabilizing force throughout the day because weddings are so stressful. Oh my gosh, yes. So I'm kind of like a, a third party who's mm -hmm. not there in the midst of the wedding, but they know me well enough that I can... There's there's definitely been a few times where I've had to play a little bit of therapist at weddings. or <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be okay. I say that I'm like a bonus groomsman or go. a bonus bridesmaid. Yeah. I've definitely even been a br bonus bridesmaid and stuff to some of the brides <laughs> just because... Sometimes you just need that support. And I think people want that support. They do. They want more than just somebody who's clicking a camera. They they want somebody who's going to be there to help support them throughout the whole day. And I try to do that the best I can. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm sure they feel that. And I could tell when I met you that you were a people person. Like you immediately like smiled and lit up. And so people light you up. And um, same here. I think, you know, we're called to love each other well. And so um, I'm sure... During a stressful wedding day, it's probably a big thing for you to do. It definitely is. I, I and tell then you're people, probably a little stressed too. Sorry, I jumped in. Oh no, I I can I can I try to be pretty chill. I'm I'm a pretty chill guy most of the time. But as far as being a people person, I definitely am a people person. But I also like my alone time at the end of the day too. I like to tell people I'm very much a vocational extrovert. <laughs> but like at the at the heart of things, I think I'm actually. A little bit of an introvert. Bit of an so introvert. I think we all have one side or the other. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. And I would be, if I'm you, you've got one shot. Like they don't redo the vows and they don't walk mm -hmm. down the aisle again. And I mean, right. you couldn't like, hey, let's rewind this. I forgot to turn my, you know, lens, took my lens cap off or something like that. You know, that's just me and my like, oh goodness, this is going to be a big Yeah. Deal. It's, it's, it's kind of, honestly, sometimes I, don't think about all the things that go into it because yeah, it's just become such it. second nature. Yeah. And I really think being in Houston and doing those political events and stuff, those really helped me quite a bit because I kind of take things more from a photojournalistic standpoint. I love capturing actual moments when they're happening. Um, I obviously you do some of the pose stuff in the portraits, but really my specialty is capturing those hugs, capturing those handshakes and those kisses and those moments where grandma's just crying yeah, as the, the bride's coming down the aisle hands. and stuff. Yeah. And that really, I learned a lot of that from that time in Houston because you only had that one second when we called them the VIPs, whether that's the the politician or right. you know the important people at the events, when they're shaking hands with people, when they're uh, talking to people and smiling and laughing and maybe getting those those pats on the back and stuff, you really only have that one second mm -hmm. to capture that. And sometimes it's a really important thing to get. And so I try to take everything that I've learned throughout all types of photography and, and incorporate it into the weddings to make them 
the best they can possibly be. That's cool. How many weddings a year are you trying to do, or typically do you do? It really depends on the year. Um, I'd say probably typically it's maybe around 20, maybe a little bit uh, more than that. Here, there's there's definitely wedding windows. Spring and fall yeah. are the wedding windows. Summer's a little bit too hot because a lot of the venues around here are outdoor. Mm -hmm. And then winter is too cold. Yeah. So... So spring and fall is where the majority of them get crammed into. Yeah. So especially fall. Yeah. Everyone wants those pretty leaves. <laughs> they want the pretty leaves. And you were telling me too about everybody wants to be on the top of a mountain. Yeah. Picture taken. And yeah, that's kind of been the uh, niche that I've fallen into, which I love. I love hiking. I love getting outside. Um, so, so it's kind of this event. It's called adventure weddings. Um, is kind of what people call it, and. So I, I love doing the adventurous weddings, going up to like Roan Mountain or up to Beauty Spot and stuff. A lot of people like to do their, I'd say mostly engagement sessions happen in those kind of places, but there's definitely, I've definitely shot quite a few weddings up there, usually smaller type mm -hmm. weddings, elopements, things like that. But, but yeah, the mountain vistas around here are really good. And there's a lot of people who like to come into town and get shots of those. And so... Seems like in a lot of cases I'm the person they call, and I'm always very grateful yeah, to be able awesome. to go up and do those mountain weddings and stuff. So yeah, well, and you also have another little hobby you were talking about <laughs> earlier called hike solo outdoors, right? Yeah. So, so you don't mind hiking to the top of Rome Mountain with a big bag of cameras? I don't. I actually love it very much. So hike solo outdoors started out um, kind of as a, a funny joke. The name originally came because the there was a Star Wars movie. Han Solo yeah. had come out and it was Han Solo, a Star Wars story. And so the original name was Hike Solo, an outdoors story. <laughs> um, but it's kind of changed <laughs> since then to Hike Solo Outdoors. Well, I, and I just thought you couldn't get anybody to hike with you. You like were too fast or something. I am not too fast. I'm very, very slow. And so everyone should come hike with me. But I just, yeah, I mean, there's, I didn't have a lot of people to hike with me and I kind of liked being out there by myself. Um, and so that's, that's part of why the name came around and it's, was just this little thing that I started and basically what the concept behind it was, is I wanted to go out to kind of Northeast Tennessee, Western North Carolina trails and document them, like do like videos of them and stuff. So I'll take camera gear out do little videos, maybe five to 10 to 15 minute videos, something like that, just documenting a trail and mm -hmm. maybe people who can't physically hike there, or maybe they're too far away. Maybe they can watch that or just anyone who's kind of deciding if they want to go out on a trail. So I kind of made a little website to accompany with it. I haven't kept up with the website. I need to, to do more stuff on that, but really the YouTube channel is what I did a lot of stuff on. And then I, created a Facebook group in tandem with that, which the Facebook group out of all the things has just been the thing that's kind of blown up. Oh yeah. So it, it's a really fun spot. And I like to say that we are the kindest and most helpful outdoors group on Facebook. Yeah. So I, I try to make sure everyone is answering questions, you know, with grace mm -hmm. Um, and, cause not everyone has the experience that other people have. Uh, yeah. And like, if you're just wanting to go on a hike, what are some things that you know, like what exactly just little questions? There's people asking questions in there all the way from people who've never been out in the mountains at all. People who don't live around here, mm -hmm. who are thinking about moving here, or visiting here all the way up to people who have hiked all the way through the Appalachian trail. Yeah. So it's, uh, we definitely pride ourselves on being very kind and being very helpful to anyone who needs it. Um, and we also do a group hike every month. So oh, cool. I lead a group hike and take people around and we usually get about maybe eight to 10 people who come out on the hikes. And so we actually have one coming up uh, on the Saturday after this one. So I oh, believe okay. that's the 25th. Yeah. Somewhere in there. So we're going to go hike around Watauga right, Lake. This is dropping. It's probably tomorrow that they'll... It'll no, it's actually the following Saturday. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go hike around Watauga Lake. Uh, do about six miles. A pretty easy hike. Not too much elevation gain. But we're going to 
go out uh, from Oliver Hollow Road out in Hampton um, out to the dam, the oh, Tauga nice. Dam. Yeah. So, so that'll be fun. That'll be pretty. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be nice weather. And, um, yeah, the in the winter we... Fish, or about, yeah, East Tennessee is... You just never know what the weather's going to be. You never it's know. 68 degrees tomorrow. And yeah. It, and, <laughs> and I try to keep the hikes lower elevation yeah. whenever it's the winter. I made the mistake the first year I had the uh, hiking group, which was 2019, I think. Maybe it was the following year after that. I, I made the mistake of trying to schedule a hike up on Roan in January. And it was just snowy and icy every single time we would reschedule. And so that didn't end up happening. So... Okay. Throughout the winter now, I, I try to keep it lower elevation to prevent that because no one wants to be hiking in ice. No. It's just dangerous. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, tell us, do you have a vision for your hike solo outdoors? Is that, are you hoping to grow that or is that just? Yeah, I, I want to grow it. Um, I don't know if it's something that I ever, because right now it's not anything that's making me any money at all it's not right like it's not something that financially i'm like oh i need to do this to no it's nothing like that just a passion project it's very much a passion project and it's a hobby and i don't know if i want to change that because once you start doing something as like quote unquote a job (laughs) or a side hustle or whatever it is it takes on a different life Uh it takes on a different kind of like it looks different in your psyche because at that point you're not just worried about doing it. It's like an obligation at that point. It's like, Oh, I need to do this because I, you know, obviously money's helpful for people. Um, money's helpful for families and stuff. And photography, while I am still very, very passionate about that at one point, it was only a hobby. Right. And then once it became a business, things look different. A little, Yes. Um, and it's still very much a, a passion project. I try to go out and do things for myself personally with photography, whether that's wildlife, whether that's just going out and doing abstract stuff on the street, because that really helps me stay passionate about it, and sure. it helps hone my skills in different areas. Um, but I don't know. With Hike Solo, maybe one day down the road, like, would it be nice to – get maybe some like ad revenue off of the YouTube videos and things like that. Of course it would be, but do I ever want it to get to the point where it's like, I feel like it's an obligation more than it's something for fun. Right. I don't know. At this point I would probably have to say no. Yeah. And that may change down the line, but yeah. Or you figure out a way to just get a little revenue. That's just a bonus, you know, right. Just kind of helps you pay for your time while you're curating. That would be, that would be fine. And that would be nice. But but I don't know, the, especially with like the the group and stuff, there would be some things that have to change if that's the direction I would want to go in. And I don't think that I would, I want to change the group away from kind of the trajectory it's at, which is more of an fun, helpful, informational discussion group. Like the last thing I want to do is start bombarding people with Pop-up. sponsorships yeah. and ads and stuff like well, that. Well, you also have a... Uh a pretty healthy YouTube channel with it too, right? Yeah, the YouTube channel is growing. Uh, it's It's been something that's kind of taken a little bit of a backseat since having a child, um, just because it's it's harder. I get out and hike, but it's a whole different thing getting out and hiking and recording a video sure. for it. So a uh, two-hour hike might take five to six hours. Oh, wow. Depending on the video you're recording. Now, these – because – these are very in-depth videos I try to do. It's not necessarily just turn on a GoPro on my chest and walk the trail. I do have some videos like that, but it's things like hiking up to an overlook, setting up a camera on a tripod, doing a 30-minute time lapse, um, hiking to the next spot, recording on the way, having doing research in the meantime so I know the area so I can give some in informational stuff during the video so not only are you seeing the trail but you kind of know some of the history behind it maybe some of the people that have been there before you know why things are named certain things so so there's quite a bit of research that goes into it and quite a bit of time it's a full day thing every time I want to go out and just record a video let alone 
than the editing process and all right. that, cutting it together and stuff. Yeah, so a new two year old at home, that's a hard yeah. It is, yes. It's it's mm -hmm. it's kind of tough. And also it's like a lot of times I would I would do these hikes on Sometimes I do them during the week, but I would also do them during the weekend. And so the weekend is kind of reserved for family time. Yeah. And during the week right now, I'm still finishing up some of the weddings from the end of last year. So, okay. so once all the weddings get edited, it's kind of like that winter time is like the perfect time to do those hikes. Yeah. But everything's gray. Right. So you kind of have to pick your specialty areas that you go to, you know, maybe make it a waterfall or a really, really nice overlook that even if things aren't green, it'll still look cool and stuff. So, so there is a lot more that goes into it than yeah. maybe people think. Oh, I'm, it's kind of yeah. like photography. Yeah. People think that in photography, you just go out and push buttons on a camera, but there's really so much more that goes into it. So yeah. cool. So how can our listeners connect with you, especially if they're thinking about getting married sometime soon and need a photographer? Yeah, so they can go to my website. It's jaredjarvisphoto.com, um, J-A-R-E-D-J-A-R-V-I-S photo.com. Um, that's probably the best way, but I'm also on Instagram. Instagram, it's just Jared Jarvis Photo as well. And I'm on Facebook, same username, Jared Jarvis Photo. You can connect with me pretty easily through any of those sources. Um, I would say the website is probably where people find me the most, mm -hmm. but I'm on Instagram and Facebook just as much. So any of those places are good to connect. So that's cool. And then you can hook up with him too and do a group hike sometime. That's right. Yeah. You can East Tennessee hiking and outdoors is what the hiking group is called. I don't know if we said that already, but mm -hmm. it's East Tennessee hiking and outdoors. And yeah, we have about, 27,000 plus people in there. That's so awesome. it's a, uh, it's a big group, but the group hikes are still very, um, they're still very personable. It's not like a hundred people coming out there or anything. It's usually, <laughs> like I said, about eight to 10. So That's yeah, cool. we would love to have people come out and, and hike and hopefully it kind of becomes one of these things where it's not just in the hiking group. Maybe, you know, people kind of are, are joining because, they're moving to the area yeah. and, and they, they kind of want to get acclimated to some of the more basic hikes. Cause we don't do anything super strenuous. Right. Um, and it's really a good outlet if you're not used to hiking to getting out and seeing things and being with people and feeling safe. And so, yeah, I think it's always good to hike. Yeah. Not so it's, <laughs> it's always good to start out in a group That's right, before you sure. decide before to hike you solo. Go solo. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, um, anything else you wanted to share with our listeners that I didn't ask you? Hmm. I don't think so. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm, well, I guess I have a small plug. Um, right now in the weddings, if you do want to book a wedding with me, so we're running a uh, it's up to two hundred and fifty dollars off of any eight to ten hour wedding days. Oh, so wow. nice. So you can, uh, depending on the wedding collection that you want to do, you can save a little bit of money, uh, and that's a limited time special that's going on. So cool. We'll connect with Jared and maybe yeah. save some bucks. That'd be good. That'd be really good. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It was just a pleasure getting to meet you. I'm sure our listeners learned a lot about photography. I did, for sure. And I'm excited to maybe go on a hike with you sometime soon. That'd awesome. Well, I'd love to have you out. Thank you for having me. Oh, man. It's my pleasure. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until um, next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you want to make a move here and hike with Jared and call East Tennessee home, I would love to help you find a house or... Um, help you sell your house or invest in real estate. We love helping people build wealth through real estate as well. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Until next time, talk to you soon.